hey guys i want to show you this post on twitter posted by jilamo i don't know if i'm pronouncing his name correct or not but it's he's the vessel of ceo and vessel takes the responsibility of maintaining next years so he tweeted hydration error devs have been achieved internally at demo day coming to your next year soon now i don't know if you understand how big of a deal this is because there have been a lot of memes about hydration errors and uh, the bad dx around it because not a lot of description has been provided in uh, hydration errors and most of the time it's just some random stuff which isn't even related to your next js application it's just some random files random call stack but now they finally have a proper diff where you can see like properly what uh, the server is sending and what the client is rendering and i think it's pretty cool it's still out in canary and it's not in production yet but i think it's pretty cool we should try it out so yeah now we can see the comments it say first of all it's first of all my reply is thanks 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 i can't even tell how happy i am looking at this news yeah because i was very happy this was on march 1 i couldn't record this video until today because i was recording some other video but if we scroll through the ad uh I am more excited to hear this than to hear AGI has been achieved internally. Yeah, sure. I I feel the same. I feel very similar way. Like with all due respect to AI advancements, but like this is what I have been waiting for. So yeah, uh, that's great. The only thing I hate about next year is the hydration error. Yeah, sure. Too late. Hydration errors will always be the. But you can you center a dev meme of the React ecosystem? So yeah, it's been a meme for a very long time. So yeah it's going to be pretty fun to see how the diffs work uh, I'm I have set up a nextjs application to show you exactly uh, how we are going to replicate an hydration error so first of all I want to open my z so if you don't already know I have been like a uh, in my latest video about bun I have been like using z because it's pretty fast and I want to make a review about it pretty soon so that's why I'm using it so how are we replicating an hydration error here so in page.tsx which is a server component we are rendering a client component and we are passing in a date and what we are doing in the client component of course this is a client component because we are using the use client on the top what we are doing here is we are first of all trying to render the uh client side like the client side date and if uh, it's it doesn't exist like for the like first couple millisecond if it doesn't exist then we are printing the server side uh date which we have gotten from the server side this absolutely doesn't make any sense i know but uh, why am i doing this to replicate a hydration error that's pretty simple you can even do p inside p but i wanted to like bring this we will also do p inside p so don't worry about that so what i want to do first of all i want to check the next js version in front of you so we are on 14.1.1 which is the current stable version of next js so yeah now we go back to client component and i'm going to do bun dev and wait for it yeah i'm going to open local host 3000 here perfect i don't like it's taking a lot of time but i guess we have to wait for it yeah in the first go it's i don't think it's going to show yeah it is showing in hydration error because the seconds were different but i think i'll just reload it again i think it disappeared yeah perfect text contents does not match with server rendered html warning the text content did not match then it gives the server and the client thing but the thing is like you don't get a proper diff like what is this <laughs> this is just the component stack of course you can work through it but it's definitely not pleasing to the eye and it i don't like it's still better than what it was before during the pages router it actually makes some sense previously it didn't make absolutely any sense so yeah now we are going to upgrade to next year scanner and see how this looks so i'm going to cross this and i'm oops see i'm going to open z and now i'm going to do clear i'm going to do bun install next canary let wait for it perfect now bun dev again let's open the browser i'm going to try to replicate one hydration error again so like if the seconds on the client and server are the same you won't get any hydration error but if they are different you will so i think in this case we do have so it says error text content does not match the server oops i think i need to reload 
Yeah. Text content does not match the server rendered HTML. See more info here. Then the text content does not match. Then we get all the stuff. But the thing here is that we have a proper diff. It tells that it's coming from the home component. It goes into the main tag. Then it goes into the client component, the, co the name of the component which we created, which is obviously a client component. And then inside a div. And then we have the thing which was, um, hold on. So I think uh, it was sent. I think the 45 was sent by client. Yeah. So I think the 44 was sent by server as well. So like the red one is sent by server and the green one is sent by client. I think this one is much more cleaner. I mean, you at actually get an idea about what's wrong and where it's wrong with a very clean thing like unlike before. It's pretty cool. And like if you are coming from a pages router thing, this is going to be like a blessing to you because in pages router, if you get like a hydration error, like at least previously, I don't know about now, but if you got an hydration error before, you have absolutely no idea what's happening. So yeah, uh, this is pretty cool. Now what I want to do, I want to like uh, have a P inside a P. Uh, so I'm going to cut this. I'm going to have P, P, I don't know why Z doesn't auto close it, but all right. And now I'm going to paste it here. Now we should only get one hydration error to be completely honest. So yeah, I think inside, uh, yeah, we need to, you know what? I'm going to go to the browser and I'm going to do localhost 3000. Yeah. Now we have one error. Yeah, now it says that uh, hydration error failed because the initial UI, whatever. In HTML, P cannot be a descendant of P. This will cause an hydration error. This is a much more cleaner error than previous. And I think I like this. Uh, of course, don't upgrade to Canary just for this. Uh, of like if you're developing and stuff, it's fine. But I would recommend against it. I just wanted to get a video out because I was too excited about this. That's why I installed Canary. But in ideal cases, you do not want to mess with a canary in production environment. So keep keep that in mind. <laughs> so yeah, before before we end the video, I want to show you this uh, thing. So like um, where it is. Yeah, this one. So text content does not match our render HTML. I wanted to like go into the versal docs on like the hydration error thing. Why this error occurred? While rendering your application, there was a difference between the React tree that was pre-rendered from the server and the React tree that was rendered during the first render in the browser, hydration. Hydration is when React converts pre-rendered HTML from the server into a fully interactive application by attaching event handlers. Common cases, hydration errors can, can occur uh, <laughs> hydration errors can occur from incorrect nesting of HTML tags. So like if you, nest p inside a p div inside a p or ul or ol inside a p it will happen like that or like interactive content cannot be nested like a inside a a button inside a button so like there's a lot of rules like uh like i don't think these were a thing like in the create react app days you could just get away with it but i think it's a good change not really sure how you feel about it but yeah i mean why would you nest a inside a like I, I know there are some use cases but like <laughs> you should not be doing that ideally then using checks like type of window is not equal to undefined in your rendering logic using browser only apis like window or local storage in your rendering logic browser extension modifying the html incorrectly configured css in js libraries uh incorrectly configured edge cdn and that attempts to modify the html response such as cloudflare so possible ways to fix it. Solution one is using an use effect. So like you know, just use an use effect. So like whenever the entire client is loaded, you won't even get an hydration error. So yeah, so like uh, you set an ease client and as soon as the use effect is run, that means that you are finally in your client component and uh, it's safe to like render your stuff. So you can check if it's client or not, or you can render your server stuff. Or like this for disabling SSR. Uh, like I don't think, uh, yeah, I think you can, do it in app router because it's under app router so i don't know if you can do this in app router but if it's inside the app router documentation i think sure you can do that then uh, classic suppression hydration warning you can also do that but like yeah like if somebody is like way too annoyed with hydration errors they might do this in the very first place i understand them <laughs> but uh yeah i think i would try to figure out what's wrong and then i would do that uh, do this like uh, even they say sometimes content will inevitably differ 
between client and server such as a timestamp which we did in this uh, uh, video you can silence the hydration mismatch mismatch warning by adding suppress hydration warning true to the element so yeah that that that's the last resort so use that if you can't do anything and like if you are super annoyed that the hydration errors don't go away so yeah that's how the diffs in hydration errors work it's going to be a very good change like once it's out in production i think it's going to save a lot of time of developers and it's a step towards a better developer experience uh, i know there are a lot of different things which people complain about about next years about not having a good developer experience since the introduction of app router and server components but yeah, I think every day something is getting better and I think one day we will all live with the fact that React server components and developer experience can go hand in hand. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you like this video, make sure you click the like button, hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification as well. Share this video with your friends. And if you have any suggestions, make sure you leave that in the comments below as well. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.